I, I've been reflecting so, on how I got introduced to the whole practice of teaching controversial issues and also teaching sensitive topics. But what I think is really important to do is to distinguish the controversies that are being debated out there in the public and by politicians who are really interested in grabbing as much power as they can, however they can do it, and the controversial issues that we actually want to bring into the classroom, because those are two very, very different things. One definition that I go back to from Diana Hess is controversial issues that we want to discuss with students may be questions of public policy. They also may be sensitive questions related to contested histories. That's Stuart Foster's quote. So for example, who was responsible for the Rwandan genocide is still a source of major controversy that's extremely sensitive in Rwanda because there's an official narrative that's been promoted by the government, but there are definitely different perspectives on that question. And then they may also refer to historical events, political questions, and cultural expressions that evoke emotional reactions that are tied to identity and community. And Alan McCulley and Michalino Zembelis and Cabani have also written about that. So a question related to that would be, should divisive symbols be displayed? So I think these definitions really help us figure out what are the valid controversies that we wanna bring into the classroom um, as opposed to teaching about conspiracy theory, but not opening up conspiracy theories is something that students would actually be deliberating on from multiple perspectives. And then just to make a note about, you know, sensitive issues overlap with controversial issues. And those are the ones that are really highly charged and arouse emotions. So why do we want to teach controversial issues given how loaded they are and how politically and emotionally charged they may be? Research tells us that discussion of controversial issues in an open classroom where students feel like they have the right to disagree with one another and with the teacher leads to increased political knowledge and interest and engagement and efficacy. And that's incredibly important because we know that um, apathy among citizens and among young people in particular is a huge problem. So we wanna do everything that we can in our schools to increase political engagement, but we also wanna make sure that citizens are informed. There are several documents, the Democratic Citizenship and Human Rights link there, professional development pack that was put out by the Council of Europe and that really speaks to the need to teach controversial issues, um, both to educate for human rights and for democratic citizenship. And then in the US, the National Academy of Education just came out with a huge report that's trying to promote civic reasoning and discourse. And they're saying that we should have these kinds of conversations in all subjects, not just history and citizenship and social studies, but also in English language arts and science and even math. Others have talked about the importance of teaching controversial issues as a path to reconciliation and peace building. And we know that the pedagogies that we use for teaching controversial issues have everything to do with active learning and student engagement and dialogue and relevance. I wanna acknowledge that doing this work does require risk taking. So if we wanna be able to take risks with one another, we need to set some norms for discussion. So I borrowed these norms from a colleague. Um, the acronym is ASPIRE. So A stands for assuming good reasons for what we say, but also acknowledging the impact that our words have on others. Um, S is for speaking one at a time, make room, take room, step up, step back, so that everybody gets a chance to speak. P is for participating with an open mind and taking different perspectives. I is for using I statements. R is for respecting confidentiality and taking risks and obviously respect. E is, um, stands for escuchar, which is Spanish word for listen, listening to understand and having empathy with yourself and others. My book, Hard Questions, Learning to Teach Controversial Issues is based on research that I did in 2016 to 2018. There's a lot of research on teaching controversial issues and it's a, in a very rich international body of literature. But there really was nothing on how teacher educators prepare pre-service teachers to do this work. So if we want teachers to be 
engaging students and exploring controversial issues, then we really need to think about how to prepare new teachers to take this up because it's a demanding set of practices. So I studied four teacher educators, two in Northern Ireland, one in the English Midlands, and another in the US Midwest. And uh, this work was funded by, funded by the Spencer Foundation. And what I did was um, visit these locations twice during the academic year. And I observed methods courses at the universities. And I really tried to immerse myself in these communities and these cultures to understand better what was happening. And I interviewed each teacher education a few times over the course of the year. And I followed 15 pre-service teachers through their coursework and their um, student teaching placements. And I interviewed them a few times as well. So all of this led to some really interesting findings about how these teacher educators equipped their pre-service teachers to take on this demanding and complicated work that does involve risk-taking. And I found that there were eight elements to uh, what, what I developed as a framework for reflective teaching of controversial issues. So the teacher educators taught various strategies that fit within these elements. So the first element is cultivating a supportive environment. A second is selecting authentic issues to bring into the classroom. A third is preparing thoroughly, knowing your subject matter and your students really well and the context in which you're teaching. Um, choosing resources and pedagogies thoughtfully, thinking through your own stance on the issues as a teacher, guiding discussion so that discussion is productive and students get to exchange their ideas with one another, communicating proactively with students and with parents, with colleagues and administrators so that you've got support, and addressing emotions by creating a space for them and be using different strategies to de-escalate when the need arises. So there's a whole lot embedded in this framework and we're gonna focus on a couple of pieces of it. So the first piece that we're gonna focus on is how do we select authentic controversial issues that we wanna explore with students? And I wanna make the distinction between topics and issues. So a topic is um, a subject, right? Like freedom of expression. But an issue is a question related to that topic that we could deliberate from different perspectives. So for example, freedom of expression is a topic, right? The question of when should freedom of expression be limited? And we might look at specific cases like, you know, the neo-Nazis marching in Skokie, Illinois back in the 70s, or the Charlie Hebdo um, incident in Paris, France, would get us to explore this question when should freedom of expression be limited? Likewise with segregated schools, okay, that's a topic, but the question of what should be done about the two schools under one roof situation is a question that students could explore and deliberate in the classroom. Another one, borrowing from your uh, context, history textbooks. Should we have one history textbook for all of Bosnia and Herzegovina? Discrimination in LGBTQ, how should conflicts between religious beliefs and protection from discrimination be resolved? And the Dayton Peace Accord. So was the Dayton Peace Accord helpful or harmful for the future of Bosnia and Herzegovina? So these are all complex questions that students could deliberate from multiple points of view that do have validity. Again, we don't want students deliberating about conspiracy theories. We want them to deliberate around open issues. That, are, that have valid disagreements. So here I'm going back to Diana Hess and she defines open questions as those that have multiple competing and reasonable views to explore where students get to draw their own conclusions. So an example would be, should schools punish students for cyber bullying that happens off campus? That's been actually a case that's been heard by courts here in the US. A settled question is something that was open at one point in history, but it's been resolved. So the question of should women have the right to vote, actually over a hundred years ago, that was an open question, but that has been legally resolved. Although there may be some places in the world where it is still an open question. A lot of this depends on context, right? So should students be allowed to wear religious symbols at school 
is not an open question in the US. That, that's settled. Yes, students do have the right to do that. But in France, it is a controversial question. It's open. So sometimes it gets tricky to figure out what's settled and what's open because it really does depend on time and place. Okay, so um, this is just kind of a general overview of what teaching controversial issues involves in terms of pedagogy. So you're exploring multiple perspectives. And I, I know that there are a lot of different interpretations to teaching controversial issues. So please be aware that I'm giving you a particular perspective on it, right? Um, I'm not covering all the ground here. So exploring multiple perspectives on open questions, right? Engaging in dialogic pedagogies that involve inquiry and discussion. Um, students get to weigh different viewpoints and evidence and they get to draw their own conclusions. And there are many different approaches that have been developed by educators and youth workers in lots of different contexts, peace activists, et cetera. So, um, I've been thinking a lot about, and actually this came up at the workshop yesterday, Alan McCulley brought this up. We really need to think about the fit between what kind of issue are we exploring and what kind of pedagogy are we using? Those two things you know, need to be appropriately matched. So I'm gonna get you to think about a particular approach to exploring analytical questions, I think it can be easier to start there. If students aren't used to discussing issues with one another, think you wanna wait a little bit to dive into the really emotionally charged issues and maybe start with something that's a bit more removed, more analytical, um, and use something like this approach, which has been very popular with teachers in several different countries. There was a, a professional development and research project called Deliberating in a Democracy, where they taught teachers how to use structured academic controversy, which is another word for deliberation, 